Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is from chapter number 17, four year series from Fundamentals of Electric Circuit Book by Mr. Alexander and Sadiku. And here we'll be discussing example 17.7. And this is on the request of a student from Bangladesh. Let's see. This is the question. Find the response I0T of the circuit. So this is the circuit given. IT is this current. I0T is current through the inductor. So we have to find I0T. If the input voltage VT has the Fourier series expansion, so the input voltage has been represented by a Fourier series. And I hope you remember that any periodic signal which is of any shape could be represented by Fourier series. So this represents that signal. Now the first thing we'll do is just divide the uh, input signal into two parts. This one does not have any time constant at uh, time variable with it. Therefore, this is constant. This is we'll call DC voltage. And the one which has the time uh, variable with it, that is the AC signal. So we'll treat them separately. So we can call VDC to be one volt from here. And the remaining part we'll call VAC. So we'll primarily uh, now deal with the AC part. DC we have already found. This is the AC signal. Uh, for converting into phasor, you know we have to convert the circuit uh, as well as the input into phasor form to easily solve the circuit. So to convert into phasor, uh, I hope you remember that if we have a signal in this form, Vm cosine omega t plus phi, then in phasor form, we can write it as the magnitude Vm and the angle phase angle phi. So that is what we should do with this signal, although this is not in the form of cosine omega t plus phi, but we'll try to arrange it in a manner that it becomes of this form. Okay, so we have to manipulate cosine and t minus and sine t to bring it to the form cosine nt plus phi. And how can we manipulate is, uh, before that, let's see if we, if we recall this formula, that cosine alpha plus beta is equal to cosine alpha beta minus sine alpha minus sine beta. And since our we, we desire it in this form, so let's uh, move it to the left-hand side and so we can say that cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta should be cosine alpha blood beta. So we have to manipulate this signal in this form. Okay, how can we manipulate if we write one with this? So one multiplied by cosine nt and the second one n multiplied by sine nt. And if we assume that cosine alpha is equal to one. So this one is equal to cosine, uh, sorry, cosine phi. And similarly, this n is equal to sine phi. So now our equation would become like this. For one, we're writing cosine phi, cosine nt, and here sine phi, sine nt. And now we can e easily apply this formula. So it would be cosine nt plus phi. Now this is in proper shape, we can write it now in phasor form. So the given signal it has been written in this form. Okay, so we were up to this point. Now a couple of things we have to find. First of all, what is phi? Phi we can find from the assumptions that we had made. And that is, if we divide sine by cosine, that means n divided by one, or you can say sine over cosine is tangent, tangent phi is equal to n, 
and therefore phi will be tangent inverse n. So we can put this value here. So our signal will now be cosine n t plus tangent inverse n. So let's call this our equation number one. And now VST, this, this whole signal can be written, sorry, this whole signal can be written as we replacing this part with the cosine nt plus tangent uh, inverse n, putting this value. And one more conclusion from here we'll get is that the general equation for the Fourier series says that the value is cosine n omega naught t. Now in our case, n omega is equal to n. So we can say that n omega naught is equal to n, and n omega naught is actually called omega n. And now we convert the circuit into phasor form. You know that inductor and capacitors are changed in phasor form, so the only change will be this one with j omega n and value 2. And also we change the voltage into capital V and current into capital I and I current I0 into capital I0. Now, from here we can find the uh, uh, impedance total, which is these two in parallel plus four. So we can write four plus J omega and two parallel four. When you solve this in parallel, you get this value. I hope you will have no difficulty in doing that. And then taking the LCM, uh, this one is the LCM, so multiply this by four and then adding, this will be the final answer. And now the current, we'll find the main current first, and then we'll find I naught. So the current is V over I, or I, uh, sorry, current is V over Z, I is V over Z, V, and this is the value of Z. So this will be our current. And now you can see to find this, this current I is up to this point. Here it is dividing into two parts. So we'll apply current division rule. And I hope you remember that in current division rule, we divide the total current, that is I, by total impedance multiplied by opposite arm. So we're going to find current here, so we'll multiply by four. Let's see, our equation now will be I divided by the two, four plus J omega and multiplied by opposite arm. Putting in the value of I now, this was the value we put in here. And simplifying this to multiply and get simplified. So this will be our simplified answer. So I hope you can do it. I'm not going to repeat this. So we were here, this was our I naught, and this is omega n. Now we'll plug in the value of omega n, that is equal to n. So I naught will be V over four J n four, taking common four, one plus J n. And now this is in complex form, so we can replace it by magnitude and phase angle. I hope we remember this formula. X plus JY can be written as magnitude and phase angle. The magnitude is the square under root, and phase angle is tangent inverse of Y over X. So we'll apply that here. So V4 from here, we get this magnitude, and this is the angle. Tangent inverse Y over X, so N over. Now for DC component, omega n is zero, that means n is zero. So if we put n here, zero, then I DC will be V over this value, that is V over four. We had already found V DC to be one volt. 
we will put that so i dc will be 1 over 4 ampere now we'll find i ac so we were up to this point now for nf harmonic we remove the summation sign keep this value and then from here we just write the angle just we are following this magnitude and phase angle so the magnitude and phase angle and i0 we had found this value so i0 from this we can write i0 ac is v ac divided by this value v ac is the value given here so we'll plug in that values so this multiply by v ac Then one over this value multiplied by the value of VAC from here. And solving, we get this answer. So this under root and this under root multiply will be one plus n square. Two and four will be two minus one n power n. So this is IOAC. Now the total current is IODC plus IOAC. This was IODC, this is IOAC. And now, up to this point, we were in phase here. We'll go back into the time domain. So DC will remain same. With the AC, now we're bringing the uh, summation time because now this is for all values of N. This thing remains same. We'll add the cosine, you know, we, we, from here we're going here. So the magnitude cosine omega t plus phi, but in this case, we don't have any angle with the phi, with the uh, AC, no angle, so it will be just cosine omega t or cosine nt, ampere. So this is the final answer. Okay, based on what we have learned uh, in example 17.7, uh, there should not be any difficulty in solving practice problem as shown here. And the answer is also given in the book. So you are expected to obtain this answer. So give it a try. And if you have uh, any difficulty, WhatsApp me at this number. Thank you.